This hand cannon is better than Fatebringer and PvE, and you can farm for it and its god roll completely solo. That's why in this video I'll go over the best roll that you need to get and how you can efficiently farm for it as a solo player. I'm Marshix, Destiny 2 solo guides, blah blah blah, like the video, thanks. This hand cannon is the judgment. When you're farming for this, you're looking for two specific perks. The first one is Adrenaline Junkie. Bungie finally made this perk good with the 30th anniversary update. It now works similar to Swashbuckler, but with grenades. Getting kills of this weapon will increase damage and it will stack up to 5 times. Starting at 7% with 1 stack and going up to 33% with 5. These last for just under 5 seconds. If you get a single grenade kill, you will instantly get 5 stacks, even if you had none. Any consecutive kills will refresh the duration of the buff, so as long as you continue to get kills, you'll keep your damage bonus. This is great all around. You'll get bonuses just by using the weapon, and if you happen to get a grenade kill, you'll get even more damage. And this being on a hand cannon means you'll probably one-shot most red bars, and once you get the perk going, you'll definitely one-shot them. The other perk you want with Adrenaline Junkie is Demolitionist. These two perks have so much synergy with each other. This will give the ability to gain grenade energy after kills. It also reloads your gun after throwing a grenade. It gives roughly 10% of your grenade back per kill, which means you'll only need 9 or 10 kills to get a full grenade back even at zero discipline. That may seem like a lot, but that's not factoring in any other ways to get grenades back. I'll go over some of those ways in a minute, but for now just know that this is an extremely powerful perk when paired with the best grenades, and with the right build it will allow you to always have a grenade available. The part with reloading is also quite nice too, being that if you time your abilities properly, you never have to reload. So ideally, you start a fight with a grenade kill, shoot a few guys until you get your grenade back, throw another grenade to reload your weapon and refresh Adrenaline Junkie, then repeat. Is Fatebringer able to do that? I didn't think so. The other perks don't matter too much, but I will say, even though Demolitionist does reload it, having some reload increasing perks or just a masterwork does make it feel a lot less sluggish when you do have to reload. If you don't care about that, you should probably go for more range or if you're on controller, higher stability. Now let's talk builds for making the best hand cannon for PvE. We're looking for things that will benefit off of grenade kills and allow us to have grenades up as often as possible. Let's start with the mods. Stick around to the end for how to get any of these mods solo. Elemental Ordnance will allow you to create elemental wells from grenade kills. Simple enough. We already plan to get a lot of grenade kills and this will give us even more of an incentive. We also have Bountiful Wells to spawn additional wells from our grenades. Elemental Wells will give you a little bit of ability energy back whenever you walk over them, and we're going to have them do a few other effects. Font of Might will cause the Elemental Wells to give us a temporary 25% damage buff for all weapons that match our Elemental Wells. We can also use Elemental Wells to get Charges Light using the Elemental Charge mod. Picking up an Elemental Well that matches your subclass will give you two stacks of Charges Light, and we just so happen to always spawn Wells that match our subclass. We're using this with high energy fire to further increase our damage by 20%. With max stacks of Adrenaline Junkie, we'll be hitting for nearly 60% more than normal, and with Font of Might, even your special and heavy weapons will be dealing 50% more than before. Things like Cartesian, Null Composure, Sleeper, and 1k will be hitting like a truck, and that's not even taking into account the additional 40% damage from Particle Deconstruction, which we still have access to for almost two months. With all of these working together, your fusions will be hitting for over double damage. No well, no bubble, no teammates. And this only gets better with exotic armor. Warlocks run top tree Voidwalker with Controverse Hold. This is a very simple exotic, but it's extremely powerful, especially with this setup. Overcharged grenade hits will give you a random amount of grenade energy back. With the overcharged vortex grenade from top tree, you'll be hitting a large radius that is great for ad clear, and you'll get a chunk of grenade energy back on top of Adrenaline Junkie and Elemental Wells. Using this against large targets with lots of health will actually give you just enough time to proc the perk a second time, giving you even more grenade energy and most likely topping you off. On these, you'll also want Impact Induction to get grenade energy from melee hits, which will also stack with Entropic Pool from Top Tree. This is truly my favorite exotic and you'll probably see me running this in the majority of my other videos. For the weapons, go with Null Composure and Deathbringer to have two hard-hitting weapons that can take full advantage of Font of Might. Hunters, you want to run Young Ahamkara's Spine. This will increase the blast radius and duration of your Tripmine grenades. Dealing damage with abilities will also give you grenade energy. This does include itself. Get a kill with your grenade, get a chunk back, and top it off with your judgment. 
if possible, equip grenade kickstart to give you even more grenade energy just by throwing it. And on top of that, you can always use your throwing knives from middle tree to get more grenade energy. Those throwing knives will burn targets, which will give you faster cooldowns on your knives and class ability. That's why we have bomber on the class item to give us even more grenade energy from dodging. You can pretty much have a grenade up whenever you feel like it. I did test out Shinobu's Val for this build, but since we're using grenades as soon as we get them, it felt like I never really got a second grenade charge. And to be fair, skip grenades are pretty weak when compared to trip mines. For the loadout, you can run Cartesian and Sleeper Simulant, two of the best weapons in the game currently, and they'll work with Font of Might, giving you that 50% damage increase when paired with high energy fire. Titans run Ashen Wake. This will cause your fusion grenades to explode on impact and give you grenade energy whenever you get kills with fusion grenades. So get a kill, get some energy back, proc adrenaline junkie, then slay out. You'll quickly get the rest back from demolitionist. Just like hunters, you can also run grenade kickstart to give you another chunk of energy for free. I played around with other exotics like Hollow Fire Heart and Armamentarium, but Ashen Wake is honestly too good to pass up. Fusions kill pretty much any miners or majors, even in higher end activities, and the instant explosion just makes it that much better. The weapons will be the same as the Hunter, Cartesian, and Sleeper. I spent over a stack of golf balls upgrading gear for this video, so if you appreciate the dedication, please leave a like down below. Now, how do you get the Judgment? This drops from the Prophecy Dungeon, specifically the first encounter. As long as you've unlocked the Judgment once, you can farm this encounter over and over until you get the God Roll. You can quickly farm for them as a solo player by doing this. Load it up from the tower and get to the first part. We're going to skip this entire first section by jumping up into the first hole. Sword swing a few times, then do a single hop to summon your sparrow. Ride it up to the top, strafe to the left, and jump off. If you did it correctly, you will land on the flat spot at the top. Then you can jump across to the first encounter. Here you have one of two options. The safe way, or the fast way. If you want to play it more safe, you can run Risk Runner to quickly clear adds and take less damage from their arc attacks. Also run Well of Radiance and a Sword with Whirlwind Blade and Lucent Blade if possible. Since Well is a super, any damage dealt from inside the Well will go through the Goblin Shields, so you can solely focus on the boss and not have to deal with any adds. This is sometimes a 1 phase, but it is a safe 2 phase. If you want pure efficiency, run Cartesian and Sleeper with Particle Deconstruction and melt him in 1 phase. The main downside to this being that you don't have Risk Runner to chain kill all of the Scions for you, or a sword to sword swing back onto the platform if you get knocked off. You can also deposit moats halfway between the two matching spots to get both of them with only one set of moats. This saves a lot of time, but it does put you in more danger. If you've never done this encounter before, I recommend checking out this video where I explain how to solo the entire Prophecy Dungeon without dying. Thanks for watching, I'm Marshix, and I'll see you next time.